the rectangle algorithm. Let's set up our objective here by an example. Suppose we would like to optimize some kind of electromagnetic device for broad band reflection. Well, we'll probably start with some kind of initial guess that's terrible. We will simulate it and we will plot its reflectance as a function of frequency and we might get something like this. How on earth do we determine how good this works? Well, a common merit function is bandwidth times performance. We need something to quantify performance. In this case, reflectance makes sense, but we would also like to know over how much bandwidth that works because we would like to maximize bandwidth as well. So a great merit function to use here is some kind of bandwidth times performance. And here I just sort of hand sketched a possible reflectance curve that you can see. And so what we've done is we fit a rectangle here the bandwidth tells us, uh, however, how what span of frequencies this works. We would like this to be really wide. And the height tells us the performance. In this case, it's the reflectance. We want that to be as high as possible. So our problem is this. How do we figure out what is the biggest rectangle that we could fit under that curve? That's the rectangle algorithm. Probably lots of ways to do this, but here's the approach we've taken that's worked well for us. Here's the steps that we have developed for our rectangle algorithm. The first thing is to decide on a merit function and our merit function was the rectangle. And we want bandwidth times reflectance or performance times bandwidth. So when we enter the optimization, we'll have a device design, we will simulate it and we will calculate its reflectance as a function of frequency. We've been showing that as the blue line. Then what we'll do is we will loop over that line and we will go point by point left to right. For every point on that spectrum, the first thing we'll do is we will seek left until we've hit the line again. That sets where the left edge of the triangle is. Our starting point sets the height of the rectangle. Next, we seek right and until we hit the spectra curve again and that sets the right end of the triangle. From there, we calculate the width and the height. That's our merit function from that specific point on the spectra. And of course, in step two, we loop over all of those. And we compare all of the rectangles that we've calculated from each point. We figure out the biggest one, and then that becomes the overall merit function for the device, the biggest rectangle. All the other ones we just ignore and forget about. So here's an animation we're stepping through, I'm taking very coarse steps, but notice for each point we select, indicated by the vertical dashed line, the first thing we did was seek left to find the left edge of the triangle. Now we're on the, the upward slope, so the seek left was really quick. Now we're seeking right, and that rectangle is gonna keep seeking the right until it crosses the spectrum curve again, and then that will set the right side of the triangle. And we keep doing this. We go point by point across our spectrum, constantly calcing, calculating the rectangle that we would construct from the point that we're interested in. Now, of course, on the downward slopes, we really only have to look left. On the upward slopes, we only really have to look right. But if we happen to be at a minimum, that's when we need to look left and look right, which is what we're seeing now. Otherwise, we would have improperly set the, the width of the rectangle. So we do this all the way across and we're looking at each rectangle and trying to figure out which is the biggest one. So that's the rectangle construction given a specific point.
Now we're speeding up the rectangle fit. That's essentially instant. And now you can see point by point as we're going, we're constantly calculating rectangles. So the current local rectangle is shown in green and the biggest one found so far is shown in red. And so when the green rectangle suddenly has a bigger area than the red rectangle, we now update the red rectangle to be what we had found. And at the end of this, the red rectangle, the width times the height of that would be our overall merit function. All the other rectangles are ignored. They're just calculated to try to find the biggest. Now this is what we get when we just multiply width times height. So we might ask the question, what if those aren't equally important? And what if we suppressed one and enhanced the other? Would we find a different rectangle? So for this case, the biggest rectangle was found over here. And so what we saw here was the biggest rectangle for W times H. In this case, we're suppressing the importance of the width and enhancing the importance of the height. So given this new way to, to weigh those, now what is the biggest rectangle? We're searching the same way. We go point by point over the spectrum. We figure out what the rectangle size is and when the area of that rectangle, according to our new calculation of area, which technically is an area, uh, it's looking for the merit function. So here's the red rectangle. This becomes the new merit function with width being suppressed and height being enhanced. What would happen if we did it the other way around? Here, we're enhancing the width, so bandwidth is important, but for some reason, we don't necessarily care about that much about reflectance, so we're suppressing the importance of the height. Uh, and in fact, that's it. It's not going to find anything better than that in this particular simulation. And is that a good design? You know what? Probably not, in which case, I'd want to go in and modify that merit function to weigh things differently. And I'll also add, very often when I start an optimization, I will use one merit function, and as I think I'm starting to get good designs, I will tighten up or change that merit function to other things. So sorry for the sloppy graphics, but this is an output of an actual optimization that we were doing. And to optimize reflection, you can also minimize transmission. So that's actually what you're looking at. You're looking at transmission through the device and we're looking for valleys. And so our rectangle algorithm was working the same way, but uh, instead of looking up to the rectangles, we were looking downward. And so when we finally finished our optimization, Here's what it looked like. And we got a very broadband reflector from that, even though we didn't necessarily start there. So that's real data from an actual optimization. I think this one was a particle swarm optimization. But as I mentioned, the actual algorithm for optimization isn't necessarily that important. It's the merit function. In my experience, the merit function is more important than the actual algorithm. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. 
I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.